Good day. My name is Alan Palmer. I'm the estranged citizen of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. St. Vincent and the Grenadines is located in the Eastern Caribbean. It is one of the four Windward Islands. St. Vincent and the Grenadines is situated 100 miles west of Barbados. In 2012, after reviewing my case and doing the needed investigation, the United States government came to the conclusion that I need to be protected from the corrupt government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. As a result, and in order to protect my civil and human rights and to protect me from crime, the United States government granted me political asylum protection. The granting of political asylum by the United States government did not sit well with the corrupt government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines and its even more corrupt Prime Minister, Ralph Gonzalez, who has a long history of persecuting citizens of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. In his capacity of Prime Minister and with his armed security presence, Prime Minister Ralph Gonzalez is alleged to have raped and sexually assault many of the nation's females. The names that come to mind are Michelle Andrews, a female police officer who actually filed criminal charges of rape and sexual assault against Prime Minister Ralph Gonzalez. Another name that came up is Margaret Parsons, a Canadian human rights lawyer who actually took the time to file sexual assault charges against Ralph Gonzalez. In a continuing litany of allegations of sexual misconduct against St. Vincent and the Grenadines Prime Minister Ralph Gonzalez comes a new development. Colin Williams, Director of Public Prosecutions, has dismissed another charge of sexual assault against the PM. I'm Spiria Ferron Henry. Thank you for joining us today. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Who is Margaret Parsons? Well, uh, I'm a human rights lawyer. I live in Toronto. I'm originally from the Caribbean, uh, uh, very actively involved in my community, as well as um, on human rights issues, not just domestically, but internationally as well. So Ms. Parsons, tell us how the exchange was with the Prime Minister. How was it when you first met him? It was a very, very disturbing experience. I went in there, as I said, hoping that I would be having a discussion with a Prime Minister, a man of his stature. And before I knew it, I was being sexually assaulted um, by Prime Minister Gonzales. Uh, I was very, very taken aback, very, very shocked uh, by his behavior, uh, his undignified behavior for a man of his profession, but also in the in the office that he was holding, a very high-ranking office. After sitting in his office, uh, in the reception area of his office, um, I was um, invited in. Uh, I sat down. He was behind his desk, and I sat in front of his desk. He took a few phone calls, I think one from his wife um, and one from um, colleagues, friends, I don't know who they were. So we started talking, I started uh, expressing my idea uh, about the promotion of human rights uh, in, in the country. Then he came around the desk and he held my hand and uh, sort of gesturing to stand up. So I thought, because there was a long sort of boardroom table near uh, the window, so I thought maybe we were going over and it would have been more, he felt more suitable to have the discussion at that table. Um, and it was at that point he started to grab at my breast and try to kiss me and I said, Mr. Prime Minister, can you please stop? Um, he then started to say, you know, oh, you women are so irresistible. You're so, you know, beautiful. Um, um, and I said, I'm not here for any of this. Please stop. I asked him repeatedly to stop. He then went on to say, you know, oh, don't resist. You'll enjoy it. Um, and at that point, I had to push him away very hard and run out of his office. There is a young lady by the name of Miranda Woods who confronted Ralph Gonzalez in a town hall meeting in New York City in the presence of the audience and alleged that Ralph Gonzalez sexually assaulted her when she was only 15 years old as a national athlete. Prime Minister Ralph Gonzalez used the instrument of government in the form of the Director of Public Prosecution to 
cause all of these allegations that were brought against him to be nulliprous. Therefore, they were never prosecuted. Prime Minister Ralph Gonsav is alleged to be responsible for the murder and sudden disappearance of several members of the St. Vincent and the Grenadines community who oppose him politically and who oppose his social indiscretions with the ladies. Like Russian President Vladimir Putin, Ralph Gonsav has proven that he has no respect for the laws and the people of the United States of America. Ralph Gonsav had hired California registered lawyer Richard Ross to continue my prosecution on American soil. Using the monies provided to him by the Prime Minister of St. Vincent and Grenadines, Ralph Gonsalves, Richard Ross had managed to corrupt junior middle management and senior official in the California government. He have also managed to corrupt senior, junior and managerial level government employees in several cities in Los Angeles County and as well as state employees. This is a total disrespect for the United States government and represents criminal activities sponsored by a foreign entity on American soil. As a law-abiding individual, I try to seek redress from these manufactured problems in the Los Angeles County Superior Court. But the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines had provided large sums of money to purchase opposing lawyers and to purchase presiding judges. Three such judges are Anthony Mehaw, Stephen Cliffield, and Elwood Lou, as well as lawyers Richard Ross, who is the agent of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Michelle Beja, B I R T H J E, and Anita Susan Brenner. The judges were so confident that me being a stranger to California with no friends or family that they will be able to get away with their actions against me and they made some very big and blatant mistakes. Mistakes that a federal court judge will not be able to turn a blind eye to. One such mistake is lawyer Susan Anita Brenner brought a vexatious litigant motion against me with no evidence to support that motion. However, when Judge Anthony Mayhaw discovered that I would have filed a government claim against him with the California Judiciary Council, a claim which outlined damning allegation and serious evidence of wrongdoing against him, Instead of holding lawyer Susan Anita Brenner in contempt of court for abusing her privilege as an officer of the court and for me to mislead a judicial officer, which is contrary to the California Business and Professional Code, Section 6068, B, C, and D, and contrary to California State Bar Rule, 5-200 A, B, and D, all of which are supported by case laws, Williams versus the Superior Court, Volume 46, Cal California Application, Division 4, page 320, Henry Reno, 146, California Reporter, the Third Division, page 297, Mendes versus the Superior Court, Volume 76, California Reporter, Third Division, page 538, and Batch versus the State Bar of California, Volume 239, the California Reporter, page 203, or Volume 40, 43 of the California Appeal, Division 3, page 84.
8. Superior Court Judge Anthony Meha ignored my opposition to the vexatious litigants motion, which is supported by the California vexatious litigant law and associated case laws. Unfortunately, Judge Anthony Meha unlawfully and without evidence declared me a vexatious litigant to ensure that I does not get the opportunity to bring the litigation I plan to bring against him. Hence the reason why I chose to bring these cases in the California District Court. My objective is to bring attention to my plight in hope that the United States Department of Justice will look into the corrupt practice that are continued in California. Corrupt practice that affects the poor, the weak, and the disenfranchised in California. I hope you will see the value in my plight and that you will donate generously to this worthy cause to ensure that the justice system in California is changed. My name is Alan Palmer. Thank you for listening to this brief outline.